So it's been a long time since I've been in the office. And the first thing I see is that there is a team that is taking heads. Yes. And one of the agents on that team is? Nicola Vayor. Okay. Now, how, let's, let's get some context here, right? So what do I need to understand about you that'll help me understand who you are and why you're here? Yes. So basically, I started with a background in construction and development. Okay. Um, so I work with a lot of developers. They purchase two families and then they build them into condos. So I have a lot of background with doing all the paperwork, construction, um, spreadsheets, hard costs, soft costs, all that, all that little paperwork. And I basically saw them have a real estate agent that would sell the houses and make all the money. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, and I'm doing all the work. So, so you're cutting out the middleman. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So no, but in all seriousness, um, you know, commercial was, you know, very big uh, background to me. And then once COVID hit, it kind of killed commercial real estate. Okay. And I decided that I needed to switch my lanes and I went into residential. Well, I mean, I'm going to argue that you probably made a very interesting move because mm -hmm. usually, I mean, by now, I'm assuming you went through enough open houses and you have this, some realtor saying, oh, yeah, you could definitely do that, 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 that. I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. You don't do construction. You talk to enough contractors. Some of them, maybe. Most of them are like, you just put a slap of paint on it, put some molding. You should be fine. And you're, in your head, you're probably thinking, I, I, know what, yeah, I know what that costs. I know how much work that is. Da, 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 da. So from an agent perspective, you have a leg up, don't you? Yes. I see if, if I'm dealing with a seller that flips houses and I see all those finishes that are not greatly finished, you can tell right away when it was a good flip versus when it was a cheap flip. So also coming from a buyer's agent, when you have an eye and you see stuff differently, it also helps your buyer, your client, or as a seller, you kind of give them a heads up, like, listen, you know, this line needs to be connected or, you know, this is, you know, all the little nit niches, like all the little things, you notice it and you tell them and it kind of gives you a le legs up as well as even having good con contacts mm -hmm. with GCs or even um, in DOB with the commissioner. I know the commissioner in Brooklyn. So when you have, have to talk, <laughs> We're, you and I are gonna have to talk. <laughs> so, I mean, oh Jesus. So, I mean, you really got like in the weeds in terms of the whole process construction and rehabs, your flips. Okay, so, okay, we're definitely gonna have to do a lot more with you. Um, fun fact. <laughs> fun fact. So now I guess it's, I see why it makes more sense that a lot of your listings happen to be, whether from, well, I, I don't know the whole diverse, but at least this group of listings for this this cycle, um, there seems to be a lot of stuff from developers, from, from flippers, from, right? And I think it, it really fits you now, right? Like, I think you found your niche, girl. I love new development. For me, it's something I always um, like to see something, you know, you have a good foundation, you mm -hmm. have that, you know, everything set from ground up and it's kind of like you, your baby. Mm -hmm. But you also know the ins and outs versus just coming in and selling something that's already finished and just reselling it. It's mm -hmm. completely different doing resales right. than actually selling something that's, you know, you have to know the cost of what it costs to finish it, what it costs to sell it, what your profit margins and all that in and out, it kind of is like a whole picture, right? Right. So. And and for me, I think it was this time last year where I almost drove myself crazy where, um, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll even put out the neighborhood. So I was looking at Fresh Meadows and Bayside, that, that whole pocket, right? Yeah. Because I was seeing a lot of listings, for instance, most agents just overlook me coming from investor space, I'm looking at what is the billable square footage? Is there expandable anything there mm -hmm. where I could say, can I justify buying this? And Everything is numbers. Right. And so like if I, if there's no value add and it's unfortunately in New York, usually you're not seeing a situation where oh, I'll buy this and then there's cash flow if I rent. There's mm -hmm. usually it's negative. Right. So the only way for me, for me to make sense of this is if I could build out. Yes. Right. And unfortunately, I think we both seen enough houses where it's a weekend warrior job. Nothing is nothing square, nothing quite aligns the way it should not things aren't put together well mm. most people walk in oh they're new cabinets i'm like that is disgusting work yes you're paying for the appliances versus actual you know quality <laughs> of the house right and yeah. so I, I i guess from your uh when you're sitting with a seller right and you go through the discussion of hey should i rent out or should i just sell as is what as is this like, as is mm -hmm. I, I think i tend to agree and is there a reason particular reason why I think time is money. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And if you don't have good contractors, you don't have connections where you can actually get that labor done cheap and effectively in time, then it mm -hmm. makes no point because then you're stuck 
you know, um, doing work and then you're three, four months behind where you can sell it as is. And maybe you honestly, yes, renovations, if you do it nicely, it will net you more money. If not, it, you almost end, always end up losing or coming out evenly. So there's no point. Yep. And I think I tend to agree. And for me, it's. You're paying I, for the appliances. Yeah. And that, and usually for me, that's the other side of it. It's like, what what is actually important to you? Right? Is it the bragging rights of, hey, I sell, sold it for X amount of dollars? Or is it what you net in your pocket? Right? And for me, what gets me nervous is like, oh, I'll rental this and I'll even do some of the work myself. I'm like, look, Mr. Weekend Warrior. Yeah. It might take you another three months, and in that time, do the interest interest rates change? Does the market change? And in this time, and we might have a different conversation. So, could we please? Yeah. <clears throat> if you're saying that you need to get out of here, and you're looking for like a like a percentage or maybe a certain dollar amount, mm -hmm. let's get it sold. Let's not gamble. You're gambling now, and move on. But if it was a friend, he's saying, "I'm I don't know if I want to sell yet." I would say do the rental if you're gonna live in there for like a yeah. year or two, because then I'll say majority of people will not make money off the rental. Yes, especially if it's for yourself, then you never make money. Right. And so, <laughs> you like high quality. Right, right. Like this has to be prettier, has to be more, right? Yeah. So for me, I'm like, I would rather renovate, enjoy it myself, and then... And then sell it. Right. And that would be, I mean, this is me personally. So yeah. not personal yeah. advice. And then it comes down to motivation. All that stuff right. Too, so. But if you could do like a fresh renovation and I'm like, you spent thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. It's all about context to like, <laughs> with honestly it really is because if you have somebody that flips houses constantly and they don't have good contractors they don't have good mm -hmm. gcs or they don't have the funds and it holds them up so many months mm -hmm. like i have this listing now and you know he's kind of in a tight spot and you know we're kind of behind mm -hmm. with you know and i have buyers lined up waiting to see it but i can't show my, my buyers that property because they don't see it from the same lens Lines that you see it because we see it as an investor as a mm -hmm. contractor we see what it will be uh -huh. but as a buyer you come in and you get you see you know electrical lines or you see she rack that's not finished and they get nervous of you know scared <laughs> they get scared so it kind of so you really have to have a whole good team behind you same thing as a real estate agent mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you have a good real estate attorney good lender you know good it's agent it's all anyone can sell a house by the way it's just what you bring the, your your contacts you know your experience everything it's basically the value that you bring mm -hmm. as an agent versus just selling it so. and like it's for me it's one of those things of like yeah can anyone make spaghetti most can the difference is you when you make it yourself it might be okay yeah depending on your level your personal level of expertise yeah but if you go to uh you know michelin chef it's a different ball game, exactly. right? The, the time it takes, the efficiency it takes, and the quality that you'll get is yeah. much different. Um, and I think this is where, oh man, you should, I, I was surprised no one posted you beforehand. And um, I do intend on, oh, that's not her. Um, I do intend on getting the other person in this yeah. in this team. Um, and so this, it was, it, was, it was a curiosity of mine because I, I see a trend and I usually don't see that many listings that swing that way, right? Usually... The spiel is usually of like, oh, it's like a three bath, two bath, you know, freshly renovated, or maybe it wasn't, and da 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 da. The way you break down the math now, for me, I guess from a seller standpoint, would be maybe they're not ready to sell yet. Mm -hmm. I think your value add is also addition. Hey, look, if you're looking to fix X, Y, and Z, I got a guy. Mm -hmm. Right? When they finish the renovation, over time, be like, hey, how'd you like that bathroom you finish? How'd you like? And maybe two rolls, two years rolls by. I'm like, hey, Johnny's moving. Do you want to move too? I already know, like, mm -hmm. are you going to give me the listing or yeah. are you trying to, like, have me beg? Like, what do you want to yes. do? Yes, yes. So, uh, beg. Okay, so you are off to a first, like, really, really strong start. And I, just to be clear, when did you start being an agent? Around eight months ago. God damn. Okay. Eight months. And I, I saw at a very bare minimum, like, a handful of listings. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's going to slow down anytime soon. I hope not. Knock on wood. <laughs> I mean, it's not wood, but... Uh, what is your like? What is your end goal you, to continue in that real estate space? Are you trying to change this in, into like investment, partic particularly? Like, what, is there is there a particular path you're going for right now? Um, I don't have a particular path. I love what I do, and I just want to be the best at what I do. Right. The goal is to you know choose what you do and then become the best at it. Fair enough. You know, become the best at what you do. Set your highest goal and I'll be, you know, whatever your goal you're setting for yourself. And then I want to get into a niche. I love new development. I'm not sure, you know, when I will go into that, but I would love to just specialize in that. Right now, I love doing residential because I love being a listing. I mean, listing specialist for me, I think. 
I like, you know, controlling the whole, (laughs) controlling the whole situation of, you know, you know, you work with the seller and then you kind of control the whole narrative, the whole situation versus not being in control. Fair enough. I look, that's why, that's why people love being listing agents. Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep tabs now. Yeah. And that's going to get annoying. (laughs) Right. And I'm going to, I'm not like nagging that. You're not the IRS. So. No. Keeping tabs. I mean, my, I have a CPA, but you know, for me, my my spiel is usually pay your fair share and not a penny more. Good, because right? the government does not give interest back. Yeah. The way they should. Yes. So. Yes. Uh, Fun fact: you can build a two family and live in it as a one, and then do a lot of write offs. Uh-huh. Welcome to the house hack world, and you know what? I think I think you know what. With that said, I th- maybe it'll be more interesting to have you in with the investor coffee c- clutch. We're gonna have to figure have to figure something out. Something out. <laughs> something. Okay. So for something will be in the works. Oh well, yeah. I mean, I we gotta do something at this point. We got we got too many like hot talent folks in this office with crazy backgrounds. Yeah. And I think this office is amazing. And so they, much talent. Oh yeah. And I, me, my little like nerd brain always revolves around investments and wealth building and stuff like that. So let's see what we can do. Yes. But in the meantime. If people need to come find you, where can they reach out? They can find me on my Instagram, which is Nicola Real Estate. And they can find me as well on my Facebook, which is my full name, Nicola Bio. All right. Well, links and all that will be down below. If you have any questions, reach out to her. If you have any any other questions, reach out to me. With that said, thank you for your time. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye.